Welcome to this bonus lesson of the Ruby Blocks stage of the Ruby Basics course of Race Karate. In this lesson, we'll be talking about Ruby procs and lambdas. If you do not know about blocks and where they are, so I suggest you to go back to my previous lessons about Ruby Blocks and you will understand everything you need for getting in touch with this lesson. So first of all let's define a proc and a lambda in Ruby it's just a, a, a block assigned to a variable it's like a block with address or a block with name and last name something like that because we saw about we talked about blocks in previous lessons but they were anonymous blocks of code so in this case they get a name so that's called proc or lambda so first of all, let's see the different ways of creating a proc. So we create a proc, well, let's use our IRB console. The first way we are going to see to create a proc is using proc.new. Remember to add these because this is a class. So the P in uppercase. Okay, and you will see we get an error. But that's what why we are getting an error. It's because, how I told you, a proc is a block of code assigned to a variable, same as lambda. So we need a block in order to create a proc. So we just send an empty block to this proc and that's it, we got a new proc. We can add any kind of code. With So here you can see that, so in this case we add put hello world and we call it just the same way we call block, like this, my proc dot call, and that's what we get. So it printed hello world and returned new. So why it's returning? It's returning because in this case it applied the same concepts of methods last line is the returns in this case the unique and last line is the puts statement and you know puts returns nil so that's why it's returning nil here another way of create a proc is using proc keyword so we say proc and an empty block and there we have a proc here now let's talk about lambdas so let's create our first lambda so it, we create a lambda similar when creating proc so let's create lambda oops let's do lambda and send an empty block and that's it as you can see here previously it just had an identifier in memory and everything for defining the proc object and this time it says lambda right here so now we can make see some differences between both another way of create a lambda is using an arrow you can create an arrow with the keyboard using the dash and the greater than symbol like this my lambda and you just make this symbology the row the row and an empty block and then there we have a, a, a lambda so now that we know how to create lambdas let's talk about how to work with them in our ruby programs so first of all what you need to to know is that props and lambdas can receive arguments like like this so as you can see here in this proc I define the proc and then define an argument similar when we define anonymous blocks so in this case we receive a name and print it oh, I forgot to add put statement so okay so let's call it using the call method and as you can see we did not send any argument to the proc and it 
run the same way the difference is that as we didn't enter any parameter or any argument here it does print nothing for for the name argument but let's see one of the big differences between prox and lambdas so let's create a lambda with the same block of code and let's try to send to call so here I have a lambda and this lambda receives a block with an argument so we create it and now let's call my lambda and don't send anything and there you go we have an error telling us that wrong number of arguments so the, one of the big difference between procs and lambdas is that procs um, can ask for arguments but those arguments are not required instead of lambdas lambdas that the, their arguments become required now let's see another of the big differences between procs and lambdas I'm going to get out of my IRB console and I'm going to create a new file called proxandlambdas.rb okay so let's make this smaller uh, here we are going to create two methods um, I'm going to paste them to paste them here I already have them okay so here is a uh, two methods return from proc and return from lambda and we call them uh, basically what we are doing here is creating a proc and returning from the proc also added a return in, in from the method and also created um, <coughs> let's change this to lambda okay so we return from the lambda and also return from the method let's see what happened with the when we run this block of code I mean this program so let's say Ruby Ruby blocks prox and lambdas okay okay again okay so as you can see here we return the first text that was get when we call the return from proc we get this text and when we call the return from lambda we get this text as you can see here so here you have here you have the difference when we make a return um, from a proc it, al it also returns uh, from it was called in this case from this method so this return does not work because we are returning from the proc so it just gets outside of the method and returns what it finds here but instead of in lambdas when we return from a lambda and we call it I mean and we're returning it returns just inside of the lambda I mean if we have maybe a variable here variable this return will, will be assigned to this variable but as we did not so we are just calling it but the return that we will work is the return of the method itself so that's why we see the from method text here instead of the from lambda because we are re lambda returns only from inside of the lambda I mean within the lambda not inside for an able scale as with prox now that you know the main differences between prox and lambdas um, let's practice with how to implement these this structures of ruby in our ruby classes so let's create a new file I'm going to call it our call.rb okay we're going to create an article class so I already have it I'm going to paste it here okay so here we have our article class we have our, our initialize method 
and we are yelling if we receive a block we yell it so um, I'm going to explain these a little, uh, in a while um, we have a set variable method that returns um, that receives two values and uh, join them using the join function you're going to see how it works in a while so we have a title heading and body attributes and methods so each time we call title for example title method uh, we will send a value and we're going to set our title to the value we send same for heading and body we have a display where we display all the the, the article and also here we have an instantiation of the class as you can see we are creating a block here so what's doing this block when we call when we initialize uh, the the instance we are um, calling this method and we are yelling right after so we yell itself what self the self the object we are creating so that's why in this p we are getting the object that we are creating right here so we yell it and send it the self object that is the p then the p is just the article object we are creating so we call then each method that we created here for set the the, the values okay so once we go for example for the title so p dot title is this method so we set the title attribute to set variable then it receives the two arguments we are sending here the, these two strings and we return the joined result let's see how it, how this works okay so let's see I call it RB. Oh, I forget to save here. Ah, uh, here you can see we are getting title colon space that is just the the join result using this. Okay, but let's implement a proc here, so we can do the following in order to make this more interesting. Okay, so let's return a proc. Okay. So return prog new instead of have the arguments here, you're going to add it add them right here. Okay, we have here a new proc. So what we are doing here is returning a proc. So when we call the set variable method, we are returning a proc. So make imagine that we are just copying, copying, pasting in this place, something similar. So when we call the, the, the method, we are imagine that we are calling the proc. So you can see here that what we are doing is like Assigning, assigning the, the the set variable name. I mean the proc to this set variable method. So you can see that we can only we cannot only assign procs and lambdas to variables. We also can assign them to methods. For example, in this case, it's just something that you can see the flexibility of this. So let's see how it works. Okay, so you can see an error because um, you know that we are not calling the block. So just add the call here. Call and call. Now let's try it again, and here we here we are it's working okay so this is just for show you the flexibility we have with project lambdas and don't worry if you do not understand 100 percent about this concept uh, we're going to get into in further details when we were, are working with 
Ruby and Rails. So when working with Ruby and Rails, you will understand better because we use them a lot in Ruby and Rails, procs and lambdas. So this is just this was just a bonus for the Ruby blocks stage. Don't forget to take the quiz. We have a short quiz for you for for te for practice the lessons we learned in this stage. And I mean in this lesson, only for this lesson. Ah, so always don't forget to follow me on Bastionlandia. Follow us on Race Karate. Always follow us on Facebook. Keep an eye on RaceKarate.com where you will find the transcript of this video with a great and nice article we wrote for you. And thanks for subscribing to our channel. See you next lesson.